Hi everyone and welcome to today's video session. My name is Thomas and I'm one of the IELTS teachers here at Lango Learning System. These online video sessions are designed to help you improve a certain aspect of one of the four key competencies for your IELTS exam. In today's case, listening. We're continuing our series on the Cambridge 9 listening exams. Today we're looking at test 2, section 4. Please click on the link below to access the test. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone. Now, whether you're going to university to study business or some other subject, many of you will eventually end up working for a company of some kind. Now, when you first start working somewhere, you will realize that the organization you've joined has certain characteristics. And we often refer to these social characteristics as the culture of the organization. This includes its unwritten ideas, beliefs, values, and things like that. One well-known writer has classified company cultures by identifying four major types. The first type is called the power culture, and it's usually found in small organizations. It's the type of culture that needs a central source of power to be effective. And because control is in the hands of just one or two people, there aren't many rules or procedures. Another characteristic is that communication usually takes the form of conversations rather than, say, formal meetings or written memos. Now, one of the benefits of this culture is that the organization has the ability to act quickly. So it responds well to threat or danger on the one hand and opportunity on the other. But on the negative side, this type of organization doesn't always act effectively because it depends too much on one or two people at the top. And when these people make poor decisions, there's no one else who can influence them. And the kind of person who does well in this type of business culture is one who is happy to take risks and for whom job security is a low priority. The next type is known as role culture. That's R-O-L-E, not R-O-L-L, -L, by the way. And this type is usually found in large companies, which have lots of different levels in them. These organizations usually have separate departments that specialize in things like finance or sales or maintenance or whatever. Each one is coordinated at the top by a small group of senior managers and typically everyone's job is controlled by sets of rules and procedures. For example, there are specific job descriptions, rules for discipline, and so on. What are the benefits of this kind of culture? Well, firstly, because it's found in large organizations, its fixed costs, or overheads as they're known, are low in relation to its output or what it produces, in other words, it can achieve economies of scale. And secondly, it is particularly successful in business markets where technical expertise is important. On the other hand, this culture is often very slow to recognize the need for change, and even slower to react. What kind of person does this type of culture suit? Well, it suits employees who value security and who don't particularly want to have responsibility. Moving on now to task cultures. This type is found in organizations that are project-oriented. You usually find it where the market for the company's product is extremely competitive, or where the products themselves have a short lifespan. Usually, top management delegates the projects, the people, and other resources. And once these have been allocated, little day-to-day -day control is exercised from the top, because this would seem like breaking the rules. Now, one of the major benefits of this culture is that it's flexible. But it does have some major disadvantages, too. For instance, it can't produce economies of scale or great depth of expertise. People who like working in groups or teams prefer this type of culture. And finally, the fourth category is called the person culture. This type is quite unusual. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute 
to check your answers. All right, let's get going and analyse some responses to questions 31 to 40. Question 31, da da da, power source. Well, here's what the speakers say. The first type is called the power culture, and it's usually found in small organisations. It's the type of culture that needs a central source of power to be effective. And because control is in the hands of just one or two people, there aren't many rules or procedures. The word to put in this gap has to be an adjective. The speaker indicates the culture which is usually present in small organisations. Power culture. It's mentioned directly in the recording that this culture needs a central source of power managed by one or two people. So the word we need here is central. 32. Communication by... Here's what the speakers say. Another characteristic is that communication usually takes the form of conversations rather than, say, formal meetings or written memos. Well, we can easily catch this because the speaker delivers it clearly. He says it takes the form of conversations. So our answer is conversations. Number 33, might not act something. Here's what the speakers say. But on the negative side, this type of organisation doesn't always act effectively because it depends too much on one or two people at the top. In this question, we've got to work out one disadvantage of the culture. The word disadvantage here has the same meaning as negative side mentioned in the recording. It is said that power culture reveals the negative side when the people at the top make the wrong decisions. The organisation might not function effectively when this occurs. So the missing word here is effectively. 34. Not afraid of uh. Here's what the speakers say. And the kind of person who does well in this type of business culture is one who is happy to take risks and for whom job security is a low priority. We're given the phrase not afraid of, but we can hear the word happy in the recording, and they have the same meaning here. The speaker says that in the power culture, an employee who does well in the business culture is one who is happy to take risks. So I would answer risk or risks. 35, large or many, uh. Here's what the speakers say. The next type is known as role culture. That's R-O-L-E, not R-O-L-L, -L, by the way. And this type is usually found in large companies, which have lots of different levels in them. With regard to role culture, the speaker says that it's often applied by large companies with different levels. So the word I put in this gap is levels. 36 is rules and procedures. For example, jobs mm, and rules for discipline. Here's what the speakers say. These organizations usually have separate departments that specialize in things like finance or sales or maintenance or whatever. Each one is coordinated at the top by a small group of senior managers. And typically, everyone's job is controlled by sets of rules and procedures. For example, there are specific job descriptions, rules for discipline, and so on. The speaker mentions that each department is managed by a group of managers and each employee has his or her concrete job descriptions and rules for discipline. So the most appropriate answer here is descriptions or description. 37. Successful when uh, ability is important. Here's what the speakers say. What are the benefits of this kind of culture? Well, firstly, because it's found in large organizations, its fixed costs, or overheads as they're known, are low in relation to its output or what it produces. In other words, it can achieve economies of scale. And secondly, it is particularly successful in business markets where technical expertise is important. The term ability is restated in the recording as expertise. The speaker says that it is particularly successful in business markets where technical expertise is important. So the ability we need in role culture is technical ability or expertise. Hence the answer, technical. 38. Slow to see when uh is needed. Here's what the speakers say. On the other hand, this culture is often very slow to recognize the need for change and even slower to react. We can hear the signal here that the speaker is going to introduce an opposing idea by the phrase, on the other hand. He states that the culture is so slow to see the need for change. In the recording, the speaker uses the verb recognize instead of see, and the answer is change. Number 39, doesn't want a. Uh. Here's what the speaker says. What kind of person does this type of culture suit? 
Well, it suits employees who value security and who don't particularly want to have responsibility. In the recording, it's said that employees who are suitable for role culture usually value security and they don't want extra responsibility. So the answer is responsibility. Question 40. We have to listen for the advantages or benefits of the third type, task culture. Here's what the speakers say. Moving on now to task cultures. This type is found in organizations that are project-oriented. You usually find it where the market for the company's product is extremely competitive or where the products themselves have a short lifespan. Usually, top management delegates the projects, the people, and other resources. And once these have been allocated, little day-to-day -day control is exercised from the top because this would seem like breaking the rules. Now, one of the major benefits of this culture is that it's flexible. It's indicated in the recording that one of the major benefits of this culture is that it's flexible. Thus, the answer is flexible. I really hope that you found this session helpful in preparing you for your IELTS test. If you'd like to sign up for IELTS courses here at Lango, please click on the link below. Our courses are designed to help you by providing personalised learning pathways and giving you individual outcomes. Don't forget to like and subscribe and please hit that bell button to get notifications of our latest video uploads. I've been Thomas at Lango Learning Systems and hopefully I'll see you for the next video. Bye.